We are into, ooh, half of my face is burning. Today I'm gonna go into something more personal rather than something generic. And the timeliness of these nightly poetry quarters is just crazy. All right, so quickly. Today is a, yeah, dimension eight frequency. And the emotion, of, well, it's not an emotion, the um, quality of agency. The reversal of agency shows itself as impotence in the face of effective action. I'm bouncing on the passenger seat like a catatonic jockey. He's flooring it through speed bumps like there's no tomorrow. His car, his rules. We've just spent three hours on a trip I could have done in 20 minutes, if it was up to me. No car, no money, no real job, no furniture, no partner, no social circle, no hugs, no intimacy, no ambition, no warm nights, no proper nutrition, no serotonin, and hardly any will to live. For the preceding 18 months, every single professional endeavor I started, every larger investment, every creative project and every personal plan went out the window. Nothing was up to me. I was at the mercy of the economy, nonsense regulations, my anarchic brain chemistry, the weather, the wildlife, cicadas. Dude, if you don't know what cicadas are, you are lucky. My overly sensitive body, the ghosts of Christmas's past, and the unbelievable kindness of strangers. I was transfixed by the idea that I want to meet the real me without all the noise. So I gradually cut out all connections to everyone. I tried loads of new stuff, but I didn't seem to excel at anything. No thing was my thing. No amount of busy work yielded tangible results. I didn't get closer to myself by pushing everyone away. Is this all I'm capable of? Who am I at the core? Am I useless? Lonely and miserable. Hello, lovely. I'm going to share something very personal. Obviously, this was at one of the many times when I had a, a more depressed period of my life. But um, chicken and egg, the circumstances... <laughs> N nothing, literally no worldly possessions, no internal power, no external agency contributed to me spiraling down in an endless loop of questions about what's meaningful, what's valuable for me, and uh, where should I move, what should I do, what should I, where should I invest myself? because I felt like that every investment that I've made, personal, professional, was coming back to me with um, something that didn't make me feel good. Even when marginal success came or momentary pleasure came, somehow at the core, I did not feel any better. I had a lot of fear around, it is just temporary. I have moved many, many times and now I'm moving again. So I never felt like I'm settled. I never felt like I'm grounded in anything. And uh, it can chip away a sense of agency when you don't know what to plan for, when you don't see further ahead, you just, have to keep taking it day by day. And there's a, a beautiful sentiment behind it. There's a beautiful notion to it to be able to 
live in the moment and not expect anything and not run into situations and relationships with a projected image rather explore and allow yourself to be open to the other person the situation but it can be a very scary place when you don't feel like you have stability in time when the future is so out of reach whether that's two months from now whether that's tomorrow when it's so out of reach that you just simply cannot plan or when very frequently your plans are crossed and it makes you feel physically very unstable nowadays i've i've had a couple of those conversations some of them are absolutely beautiful when um, especially within the Kielantic community people are just opening up about it how difficult it is to be on this journey at this time right now and it is not easy sometimes I'm more vocal about it sometimes I'm a lot more easygoing and um, politically correct today I'm gonna be easy on it when I have my low points I'm just like get me the fuck out of this karmic cesspool today I'm feeling a lot better so I'm not gonna diss this place but what helps me to have a sense of agency to feel like there is a plan behind all this is to take to step outside of a linear sense of time take myself out of time almost duplicating myself or multiplying myself and just have a wonder about how that might have felt in the past future to plan coming here to plan this life to see exactly where I am right now because you will see it from an outsider's point of view whether you want to put that in the past before you actually arrived here whether you want to put it in the future when you're going to have a life review you're going to be able to have a yeah, secondary point of view whether you want to put it in hello gorgeous yes oh yes or whether you want to put it in the present moment right now because if time is not linear then that version of you who is looking at you right now is here and you can shift you can call it projection you can call it bilocation you can call it just a, a shift in consciousness a shift in mindset you can look at yourself from an expanded point of view right now and it helps me a lot to drop the physical heaviness the emotional burden the boundaries of biochemistry the noises of the world and almost exist like just a light conscious cloud it's a different matter density it's a different state of consciousness and from that state reassure myself that I knew what I was signing up for I've seen this I've known this I knew that at some point it is going to get this hard and I chose to came here with full free will and free agency and I chose to do what I'm doing right now because right what a beautiful idea that has made me cry in a good way so many of us 
I've spent probably the last two weeks mostly in tears, but the last week for sure, that was just full on crying. <laughs> because it was too much. It was emotionally so heavy to be in this body, to be on this planet right now. And when I'm able to just breathe myself out of this body for a second, I'm reminded that it's a miracle that we still remember that this place is not the only place. It's absolute wonder that we found each other, that we can still communicate with each other on a level that does not acknowledge conflict as reality. We might live in our echo chamber and believe that this is the only way that it can go or this is the ultimate way. When we look around, how many people actively disagree with each other, actively fight with each other. It is an absolute wonder that some of us still hold the strength not just the inner strength, but the behavioral strength. You carry yourself in the world as a reminder, a living memory of not giving in, not getting swept away, not putting our hands up and bowing to a force that um, does not care about us. We still care about each other, which makes it a little bit easier to care about ourselves, even if nobody has taught us how to do that. And for me, it has been such a gift to be able to share, even when I'm at the lowest, deepest, darkest, I still have a few incredible people who will listen to me for two hours crying and just be there. They don't offer life-changing advice. They just recognize the need to be seen and heard. I mean, seriously, oh my God, thank God you came here. Thank God you are here. <laughs> Sometimes it, that's all we need. And if you are in the position that you are crying, I'm always in the position to be able to listen. So come and reach out. Or if you are in the position to be able to listen, then um, sometimes we just intuitively feel into it when people need us. Just ask, how are you doing? How are you feeling today? It's not very often that people send us a um, good morning message. Hey, good morning, beautiful. How are you doing today? That's all we need sometimes. Because when we haven't got that message in ages, then we might get out of practice. Love is an action. It exists in practice. If we haven't practiced love in a while, we can get a little rusty. And um, it feels so good when we are reminded that this is not the norm. This place is really the exception, not in a good way. I like to call this place a metagalactic ghetto, but that's just me. <laughs> we are genuinely the fragmented karmic soup of this galaxy, matter galaxy. So if you do feel like that you are housing emotions that you don't even know where they are coming from, true, and you don't want them and it feels alien, it doesn't feel like you, but somehow your body still reacts to it, somehow you still cannot just drop it and it stays with you for days, weeks, months. 
you cannot sleep, you don't feel connected, you don't feel joy. <laughs> I'm not saying that's normal, but it happens to more of us than we care to admit. And yes, I feel it a lot of times. Yeah, energetically sensitive people can feel extremely exhausted. We are like the um, street cleaners of this planet. And that's what we came here for. <laughs> yes, no joy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, those are horrible states when, when you biochemically cannot feel joy. It's such a stupid little thing, but your brain does not allow you, your, your biochemistry does not allow you to feel certain emotions. It's like, I always say that depression is like living in a glass house, that you can see all of the emotions, you can see connection, you can see everything that's going on, but you just cannot touch it, cannot fully reach it. There is, a, it's like almost like a piece of glass between you and emotions. And, um, if you're feeling low, first of all, it's probably a sign that at some point you said that, look, when we came here, it all sounded like the perfect idea. From a state of not having a dense physical body, from a state of remembering all your senses, all your 12 senses, from a state of being able to just breathe in cosmic energy and be nourished and fulfilled by that. When you look at a place like this, you can feel so deeply for it. You can feel how the beings here are feeling exactly what you're feeling right now. <laughs> and from that state, at some point, we just went, guys, 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 we got to do something about this. We got to go in. We have to remember who we are. We have to get in there. And even though we are energetically, magnetically, biochemically trained to not forget who we are for about 20, 30 years, we are going to completely forget about everything. And then at some point, by some absolute miracle, a light bulb will come up and we're going to remember who we are slowly, incrementally, at some point, you know, in the beginning, it's going to be hard to even believe or fathom or imagine that, yeah, we have been very distorted for a very long time and then we're gonna get slowly used to it first just mentally then emotionally we're going to start to feel more of ourselves then physically we're going to embody more of our capabilities and then maybe we'll have the same perspective again that if we can see other people struggling, suffering. And maybe, I think, I think we all just want to go home. We just, we just, just, just want to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so much. But, 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 not time yet. We're, we're not quite there yet, guys. We've, we've just gotten to the point when we can actually step into our power here. It's not enough to remember. Guys, 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 shh. We're talking here. It's not enough to just remember. When you do have the freedom, the free will and the free agency again to act upon your natural powers, then it is our responsibility to just be there, physically exist here. It's not your job to preach. It's not your job to convert anyone, even if they are the closest people to you. Some of us 
have fallen in love with beings who have consciously chosen not to remember who they are. And it's really tough to see those beings. But we're still here. Maybe that's the exact reason why we came here. Because memory is just a question of time. If you haven't been remembering yourself for a very long time, then you are going to spend a considerable amount of time not remembering yourself. And then at some point, you're going to build it all back up. And eventually, all your memory is going to come online for the beings who have chosen not to remember. We are the option. We are the ones who are going to carry their memories. We are the ones who will not let go of them, but just stand in the knowledge that everything goes back home every little piece of us is at some point returning home in one piece or in many pieces and the only thing that will matter then is whether we want to do it again whether we want to do it somehow differently and those of us who have chosen to stay conscious stay focused and have the memory to be able, when we leave this place, to be able to tell about this place, to be able to carry the stories, carry the memory of what it actually feels like to live on a place, to live on a planet, in a galaxy, where the majority have chosen to forget. We're going to be the elders telling the stories to other beings who have chosen to stay out of it. We're going to be bringing home the stories of, okay, we have learned a lot of lessons in free will. And maybe it is worth to choose differently next time because the feeling consequence of forgetting is really heavy. That's what we're experiencing right now, that heaviness, physical heaviness. It's tough when we don't even dare to believe that there is something better than this place. We faintly remember, we really hope that it's true that we're going home at some point, but then you turn around and you cannot pay the bills and fuck everything. You can travel to the most amazing places and then all of a sudden you realize that you have to pee. Where do you put the two things together? This is just a flesh and blood body that has its own life, has its own existence. So how can we regain that full on self consciousness, where we just feel free from the many, 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 many boundaries that this planet is putting on us. So if you do feel a little bit down, it's quite common nowadays. <laughs> okay we are going home but not just yet we're not going to be the last ones to leave i don't i don't want to come here again <laughs> i don't think any of us wants to come here again <laughs> i think it was enough once we're like mm, mm, mm. honey Shall we check out that place again? No, 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 thank you. No, thank you. Not that place. <laughs> we 
We're gonna leave that out of the brochure next time. <laughs> but we're not going home just yet. The time when we can go home is gonna be the time when we're not leaving with resentment. When we're leaving with most of our body consciousness intact. Because just imagine, we just started to remember. Technically, in the past 200,000 years, scope, this planet is 20 years old. In terms of incarnational memory, we just opened up 20 years ago. We're babies. So we've done a massive progress in the past 20 years. Probably some of you have only been getting used to the idea of who you are for a couple of years, maybe months, maybe weeks. Maybe we're just meeting for the first time. So let's have a practice. And I would love to create spaces where we could do it together. That's what I'm doing now. So come and join. Because we can hold space for each other. Not just with words. I really enjoy when people can just arrive with all the shit that they've been holding on to and just offload because we need that sometimes because when we don't have people in our lives who actually understand how to listen just purely listen just have compassionate understanding without any savior complex without any offering or without getting anxious you know, there's so many times when, when people cannot fully listen to us because they get intimidated by our problems, whether they think that they have to solve it or whether they just get intimidated by the fact that they don't think that they can solve it. That's not what we need. Deep down inside, we know the solutions to our problems. We just need to feel like someone cares. And I do care. I care more than I should. I care more than I want to. I care more than it feels good sometimes. <laughs> so, if you do feel <laughs> I did not book a return ticket. <laughs> exactly. <gasps> exactly. Let's just go home as quick as possible. But, since we've only been here for 20 years, consciously we've only been here for 20 years, consciously we've only had the chance to come online for 20 years. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just the Spanish fiesta. <laughs> Maybe I'm just being very naive about it, but I want to get as much of my body consciousness home as possible. For that, I will need to train. First, my mind is getting used to it. And I'm at the stage where my emotions are getting used to it. And at some point, my body is fully getting used to it that if this is really not the only place, then it's not crazy to prep for the transition while we are here. Yes, I do feel this. At some point, it's going to be more natural for us to exist in multiple states of consciousness at the same time, because that's our natural state. And this one dimensional, this, this single flat reality will feel less and less real. The more we train our biology to get used to more complex frequencies, 
the more that realm will anchor in your body and will feel like the reality. That's what a home feels like. We're going to visit deity planes. That's what home starts to feel like when you get to work with beings, you get to be around creatures who did not choose to have a physical body. So they are not bogged down with any of the problems that we are dealing with. So they are able to hold space for us to heal. And that's what we are here for in body to hold space for others to heal. It's not your job to take on other people's pain. There's a massive difference between empathy and compassion. Compassion has the cushion. Empathy is like if you break your leg and I want to feel exactly the way that you feel I have to break my leg. Compassion holds the space for you to be able to grow, expand and heal. So that's not our job to break our legs, just to feel like the other person. We are here because we still care. We care to remember, we care to cultivate who we are, we care to carry ourselves with the posture of a being who still remembers our natural reality. So even if you're not going to convert people, but you can remind a fraction of their consciousness Maybe it's just going to be a memory. Maybe it's just going to be a bodily sensation. But if for a brief second, you can remind others that there is a place that feels like home, that's what we came here for. All right. I love you so much. And if you want to do it together, come, let's do it together. I get a little bit lazy. I get a little bit discouraged and disheartened. So we're creating a group where we're going to physically train. A group of people are coming together with very different set of skills so that we can hold space for each other. And the early bird training group is, oh, we're gonna be the heavyweights. We're gonna be the heavy hitters who will biophysically train ourselves to hold space for others who might just want to drop in. I'm planning having not just physical exercises, we have so we have so amazing physical exercises. Not like training training, but flowing. Oh god, just the most gorgeous energy flows. But I'm planning to have just circles where people just simply get to share feelings, experiences. For that, you don't need to know anything about Kielontic science. You just need to get a little bit of humanness left in you. Well, it's official. I'm quite in love with you. Thank you for coming here. And I'm quite in love with you, even though we've never met. <laughs> That's the beauty of love. <laughs> ballet? I would love to do ballet. Hang on. Hang on, I really have to train for ballet. <laughs> I really have to get rid of like nine layers of clothes. I would love to do that. <laughs> but maybe not ballet, but something like that. Just to uh, uh, move your body in, in ways that are moving the right energies. A lot of it comes from uh, martial arts. The other way around, a lot of martial arts are coming from this type of movement, this sort of energy flow in the body. Anywho, so, so this early bird group is, we're going to be the ones who are willing to remember and hold space for the drop-ins who might not consciously remember, who might not want to remember but they do want to feel like they do have a home. That's all they need and that's all any of us needs. So, ultimate desire. If you want, let's do it together. 
and um, the first thing that we're all going to do in that group, in the early bird group, is um, start establishing ourselves at the deity planes. They are the next planes of existence where we first transition from here. So it's like bringing a little piece of home here and um, it's almost like living like a snail, being able to carry your home everywhere you go. That's what it physically trains you for. And we are, that's the last thing, because I, I know that I can ramble on, that's the last thing that I'm going to say. Sometimes we don't, I, cho I choose to reawaken. I choose to reawaken. Sometimes it's hard to conceptualize just how sensitive we are. Thank you, gorgeous. If you imagine, see, hear, feel, sense the body as if it would be a living, breathing, bubble of conscious sparks that form like conscious threads and there's a spherical identity who knows itself as a collective as you and each and every one of us are walking around with this conscious sphere and we merge our spheres all the time. It's near impossible to stay unaffected by everything that touches you. And there are a lot of things right now that are touching you that actively want to harm you. The beauty of non-local space-time is that we can touch each other even if we are not physically in the same space. If we establish a group consciousness that agrees on the same wavelength, the same frequency, the same thought forms, the same emotions, then we can hold space for each other no matter where we are on the planet. We can start to hear each other again. We can start to telepathically communicate with each other again, please, please. Thank you for stating this truthfully. Yes. So I would love to actively work on becoming ourselves again while we are here so that we don't have to wait it out we can just remember and ease the time that we have left here it's not a lot but still sometimes even tomorrow is a scary process <laughs> so the next 30 years I'm planning to take it lighter and lighter. And it's a lot easier if we do it together because then the group itself can and will hold space for you just by the pure fact that we're sensitive. We do genuinely care. And when we want to protect ourselves and guard ourselves, We diminish our best skills. We drop our best talents, our best abilities. Because sometimes it's better to not feel anything rather than to feel pain. That's why if there is more than one of us, we can ease this process for all of us. We can be there for each other 
even if we're physically not very close. All right, today was a long-winded one. I love you so much. See you tomorrow, and I really, really hope that I see you in the group as well. Much, much love.